Hola guys and girls and welcome to the GBA Week 4 match versus the Philadelphia Scissors aka Chimpact. Actually the first time we two clash with each other so it's gonna be a very exciting match. Did not face Chimp so far. I of course watched his battle so I think I have an idea on how he, how he battles but battling yourself is always a different experience than just watching someone else battle Chimp or watching Chimp battle. So, before we dive into the whole uh, battle process and narrating all this good stuff, the usual shoutouts at the beginning of my battles go to, once again, Jim, aka Potato Jim and Burke. One Jim for recording this match for me. Like you all know, I don't have a capture card, so Jim was kind enough to record this match for me, pass me the file and now I can narrate for you guys. And uh, 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 next up, Burke for genning this team for me, so I can use it in battle versus Jim. Both the uh, channel and Twitter links will be in the description, definitely check them out. They're both in different leagues as well, so if you're up for more league content than just the GBA, definitely hit those guys up. They know that they're doing very uh, entertaining, exciting matches, so yeah, check those guys out. They're cool dudes. Next up for the team match up, if you want to know more about my team, I did upload a team builder yesterday, link to that will be in the description as well, you can watch that, it's like around 15 minutes and there you can like go in all the detail what his threats are, what my threats are, what the game plan is going into this game, why I have this EVs, why I have this, why I have this moves on this mon, so yeah, you can check all that out in the team builder, if you do not have time for that and just are here for the match, a quick rundown on my team, first up you got an expert Bersladia, the choice scarf, Magiana, um, uh, Pasho Berry, Rotom Heat, uh, Shaka Berry, Lucari, Bulky Lucario, uh, Shatshell, uh, Neolego, and an Assault Vested Primarina. So, what he brought to the table is the Cure Black, the Fortress, the Thunderous, the Duck Trio, the Volcanion, and the Azumarill. One thing which surprised me, the Fortress is there, or it didn't surprise me, I did mention Team Builder, I was more likely seeing Gliga, uh, Gliga and Sewali combination than that, but he brought the Fortress as his Hazard Removal, uh, or Hazard Bring, and his Steel type. So, yeah, I have a very nice chance of sweeping late game with my Magiana, because his only Fairy Resist is one, the Volcanion, and one, one the Fortress. Both are not that bulky. Volcano might be a salt vested, but I can wear that down easily with rocks. Uh, so Wally would have been a bit more problematic because that thing, of course, is resistant to rocks and stuff like that. And, and in general, I have more switches to the Volcano. Other than that, the big threats I mentioned are there the Dark Shield for trapping my potential, my Magiana, my Lucario, and my Neo Lego, the Cure B, which is just a monster which I I have to break the switch around, and the even bigger monster on this team is the Azumarill. I have to scout around as well. What this is, if it's a salt test, is it a choice man, is it a belly drum, is it like some kind of other berry, resist berry, or something like that? I have to scout around about the Azumarill set and the Kyurem set. Then Fortress, probably Fist Death, I would assume, because he got a more specially defensive, oh, it could be special defensive as well, because Fist Death is good enough. But either way, Lucario uh, still breaks through even specially defensive Fortress, and Dactrio, most likely Sash. It might be Bandit, because Sash is not enough to KO my. Magiana, so he might be inclined to bring a bandit one to KO Mag Magiana. And then Volcanion, I don't know, might be Choice Gift, seeing as it is. Uh, the Thunderous might be Choice Gift. Triscuff as well, Thunders might be just life up. it might be a Z-Mon, so you can easily put a Z-Mon on that, I would not, I do not really know which Z-Mon he put, would put on that, but yeah, Chip definitely has a plan on that. And Volcanion, as I said, might be Assault, this might be Scarf, might be Specs. Volcanion, like, there are like three set, main sets he could all bring to this match, they're all in, uh, viable in their own right. But yeah, that's for the team matchup. And looking at my team, Ladias actually has a very nice matchup versus his team because he did not brought the uh, Sewali Steel. Ladias has a very nice matchup versus his team. Like, the only thing I can't hit for super effective damage is the Fortress. And Fortress, of course, not the most bulky variant. Because he did not brought Gliger, Ice Beam Ladias is going to be very uh, redundant. The only thing I could hit super effectively that is the Duck Trio, of course, and the Thunderous. But Thunderous, of course, outspeeds the candidate, will switch out or something like that. And Duck Trio is so frail, it will die to uh, Dragon Poses either way as well. Well, so I would have preferred having HP Fire for the Duck Trio, but we'll see if that comes into play later in the match. But yeah, I like lead with my Ladias because it beats the uh, Kyurem, I, uh, it beats the um, Duck Trio, it beats the Volcano, and it potentially beats the Azumarill. Depends if Azumarill is Assault Test or if Kyurem Black is Scarfed, of course. So I have to scout around for that, but other than that, Ladias has a very nice matchup for this team, so I decide to lead with that, and let's see what he leads with me. Uh, black is, the screen is black, and there we go. Goat is, uh, is ch issuing a challenge versus us, and let's see what he decides to leave with. He, of course, lead with Lufthansa, our Ladias, and he goes with his upper Ang. Never mind, it's Ang. The Kirum Black. So, once, so right from the start, we have the Ladias, or 
Kiro Black matchup. He, of course, is terrible. Let me pause it right here. And yeah, of course, will scout around a Kiro. If he's Scarf, he can just kill him with a Dragon Claw. He can kill him with an Ice Beam or something like that. So I straight switch out right here into my Primarina, scouting for the Ice Beam or Dragon move, which I can both take because they're either resisted or immune to that. And if he stays in, there's a very big inc inclination that this thing is Scarf, other than that, he would switch out because he would die to a Dragon move. He decides to stay in, goes for the Ice Beam, and that damage versus my Primarina shows that he's indeed max special, uh, special offensive, and he gets the freeze. And I was like, Ugh, not again, not again, not again, game. You're not screwing me once again over. This is the this is the third time I think I can get first round hex versus me. <laughs> and it's got it's not that bad versus Primarina, of course. I have the skull, and I can fall myself out. The only problem is, I am basically forced to no go for the Skull, and this baits in the um, Volcanion. It basically gets in the free switch into Volcanion. Which is, in that sense, not that big of a deal, because this thing is my main check to Volcanion, so it would be Pyramid to Volcanion. So I was not. So I did not want to pull any doubles predicting Volcanion, I just go straight for the Skull, because this thing is either way the check for Volcanion. But other than that, I would have just gone straight for the Moonblast right here, and yeah, we will see later if that little damage comes into play. I of course go for Skull, he indeed switches into his Volcanion, not playing around, and making the thing that Kyrim is indeed the Scarf. That's like my main thing right now. Here's Wall Absorb, of course, immune to that, and I just fire off on Hidden Power Electric right here. He goes for the Sludge Bomb versus my Assault as Primarine, and that does a good amount. That does a very good amount, uh, versus, that's definitely max special attack modest, and he has the Wakan Berry, so I can't 2 it KO with the Hidden Power Electric, sadly, but he re get rid of the Wakan Berry. So, next up, from this damage from the Slash Bomb, I can tell he's max special attack modest, so uh, that was a decently high roll he got versus me, and if he would, wants to kill me from here, he needs another decently high roll, so it's a very good chance I can list this hit, but there's no need to risk it, I can't 2 it KO either way, sadly, because he had that Wakan Berry. So predicting him to go for now Slash Bomb, I go straight into Maladi, because now he is in range from Thunderbolt from Aladias because the Wakan Berry was eaten by him and I can easily tank a Sludge Bomb because Aladias is just so specially bulky and Sludge Bomb of course is no way near a stab move on Volcanion. Just about 30%, no poison, so I'm very happy with that. Right here I decide to go for the Dragon Pulse though because I'm definitely faster than this because he's not Scarf. Even if he go, if he should stay in, I can trick him with Dragon Pulse and I can recover after that the damage off he does with an our Sludge Bomb or Hidden Power Dark or whatever his move of choice is. But I decided to go for Dragon Pulse because Thunderbolt is very obvious, so he won't go into a zoom world, and versus anything else, I will do more damage with a Dragon Pulse. He indeed switches out and predicting the Thunderbolt, he actually goes into Skyrim Black, which is very nice. I can kill that kill that with an expert by Dragon Pulse, and we have Kyrum right out of the window, which is great. But he proves to have the uh, Haban Berry, which is the one weakening the Dragon Move, and that was the reason it was staying in versus my Ladias. But either way, I can 2 it KO him right here with the Dragon Pulse. I just go for safe another Dragon Pulse. I could try to predict the Zoomer coming in, but playing safe versus a threat like Kyrum Black is always better. So I go for another Dragon Pulse. He indeed does stay in, and we get rid of the Kyrum Black which is huge! Kyo Black is gone, one of the two biggest threats he had versus my team, now I only need to get rid of Azuma as well. He decides to go into his Azula, which is this Thunderous, and seeing how he brought it in, um, he eats, like Shadow Ball or Dragon Pulse won't kill me from here. Uh, like, uh, Dark Pulse that is. Dark Pulse won't kill me, so he's either going for Knockoff, or he's going for the U-turn, and so meaning that he's probably physical, I am more likely to expect him to go for the U-turn, because if him to kill me with Knockoff, he had to be max physically uh, offensive. So I don't expect that, he's probably more of a special uh, set, this is like the stand, quote unquote standard, having special thunderers. So I want to switch out into my uh, Rotom right here, predicting him to go for the U-turn, just getting some damage on me, because of course he outspeeds me. Um, he, he might he might be Scarf, because I didn't reveal anything, I did not switch up moves yet, so I'm kind of biting the choice item with my Ladias, and he indeed, like I can see, he goes for the U-turn, but from that damage on my Rotom, I can tell he is, he is max physically offensive, so he could have killed me with a knockoff right there. That is the max physical offensive, um, what should you call it, Volcan uh, not Volcanian, Thunder is so very surprising on that part, but yeah, Ladias will die to knock it from that range, so I have to be more careful about this Thunderous. He brings in his uh, Volcanian, I know, I will speak this thing, he has not, can't have enough speed to kill me, I can evolve switch, kill this thing, and yeah, basically have a good day, but he lives on a sliver of health, that was, uh, together with the, I called it after the match, we of course, I go into my, um, Primary right here, basically just a second, because I did not expect it to live, and taking the Steam Eruption, but, that combination of Hidden Power Electric with a Karn Barry and Volt Switch were two low rolls, which granted me to not kill him. And the worst thing is, that slow of health was basically the Moonblast damage. I missed out because I got frozen first turn. So, the Hex not that big there yet, but it's still already annoyingly there. 
<laughs> if I can say it like that. He goes, of course, goes for the steel eruption on my Primarina. I didn't want to go into my Ladias, uh, taking a burn on that. And now I could have switched out once again into my Ladias or into my uh, one of my steel types because the slash bomb was very obvious, but I did not want to risk that. Primarina is not that important yet anymore. The Q in black is dead. This thing is nearly dead. So Primarina is not that important. So I decided to just straight in, in here and, and, and maybe if he overpredicts, I can kill him with uh, an energy ball from here. But he doesn't overpredict, just goes for the slash bomb and kills my Primarina. But this gives me once again a free switch into my Ladias. So I just go straight for the Thunderbolt here because I did not show that yet. He only saw me going for Dragon Post, so, so, so he might think I don't even have the electric coverage. So I go straight for the Thunderbolt and I catch the Azumarill on the switch, which is huge. I get some damage on this. I can finally see if he's banned, if he's assault death and stuff like that. I can go straight for the Thunderbolt E Belt from a Max Special like Ladias, and that does under half. That is definitely an assault death Azumarill. And not only that, it's an assault death Azumarill with more bulk than the standard variant. It's very difficult to cog uh, versus assault death users because I don't really know what speed he would run, so I don't know the exact HP amount. He could not have something in HP. He he wouldn't have more on Spidef just to get more out of your Assault Death. So I can It's very difficult to get the whole spread through. But I know he's Assault Death. So I don't have to worry about Choice Band. I don't have to worry about Belly Drum. He's Assault Death. It's going to be a pain to take down. But he's not as offensively threatening as uh, the other variants. Which could just straight sweep me with like Choice Band, Aqua Jet or Belly Drum. And then sweep through my team. So more defensively an, an annoyance to take it down. Of course it's still it, like, it's still two it kills my whole team. But it, I don't have to be threatened to him late game sweeping me with a zoom. Not yet at least. So yeah, I switch out here, in, right here, into in predicting a, a play rough into my Rotom because I have the partial barrier, I can take the Aqua Jet after that and potentially kill him with the Volt Switch, but he goes for the safe knockoff, so yeah, I sh probably should have predicted that and sacked something else right here, but I was really sure he would go for play rough right here, but knock uh, knockoff, of course, is a very vital play, so that was kind of, that was a misplay on my part, I should have gone something else because now he can't just kill with Aqua Jet and my Rotom heat is gone, which is very annoying. But yeah, now I can go into my Neo Lego. I can take a max special attack, uh, max attack adamant Aqua Jet from this range. And I can just kill him with a sludge bomb. So I just go straight for that. He withdrews into his hard switch, actually, into his dark tree. And I was very surprised by that. Because if it would be a scarf variant, I could just 2 it KO him. Potentially 2 it KO him with a sludge bomb. It's a decently high roll. But I can see it. I could potentially 2 it KO him, but I'm, of course, not a scarf variant. I'm Shed Shell. So I switch out right here. Predicting the earthquake. I was thinking, like, if he hard switch, then this is probably a scarf dark trio. Because let me follow it right here, because the game is getting too ahead. Um, him hard switching in Ductrio, I definitely did not expect that because Scarf Nihelego barring Ductrio is a very viable bring on my part because it just has so he has so many poison and rock weaknesses and, and weaknesses and I could potentially sweep through his team and of course I'm faster than Ductrio. So my first assumption was this is a choice Scarf Ductrio because, because he hard switched that in because like I can see here Slush Bomb is a 2 hit KO. If I was Scarf good for now Slush Bomb I could easily sweep through his whole team so my first idea was, okay, this is probably uh, a choice scarf duck trio, but I just start switching Maladias, he won't expect, probably won't expect me to go for Shed Shell, he could could be, like, versus Gator, he predicted the Shed Shell on Heatran, and he could go for Pursuit, but I could take a Pursuit from this range, if it's Scarf variant, if it's the Bandit variant as well, but it does him way more, but I just go hard into Maladias, he goes for the Earthquake, yeah, not thinking about Shed Shell, it seems, and I have Maladias in, and I can just go straight for the Ice Beam right here. I decide to go for the Ice Beam right here, because I still want to give him the impression that I'm choice. I still want the impression that I'm choice. If Thunderbolt, I can of course can't go for. If I go for Dragon Pulse, I bait in the Azumarill. Uh, so I want to give the impression that I'm choice in, into Ice Beam right here. So I can get rid of the, um, the Volcania, which should, should have been get, getting rid of earlier already. But and he goes into his uh, Thunderous. So it seems the bait is not really working, barring he is a choice scarf um, Thunderous. Choice scarf physical Thunderous. So that's currently my assumption. Uh, choice Scarf Physical Thunderous, it kind of negates the whole Choice Scarf Ductrio thing, but Ductrio I'm not so sure, but yeah, I'm trying to bait the uh, uh, Choice Scarf on Maladius right here, and if you would go into Thunderous on a Choice Scarf Ladius locked into Ice Beam, either the bluff is not working or he's a Choice Scarf Thunderous. These are basically two options, and Rick needed to go for either for U-turn or for knockoff, because let's see, there's no other play he could go for it for you with, with uh, Physical Thunderous. I guess go straight into my Locario because of my Physical Book, I can take both of these hits easily, and yeah, if he turns out, I have a threat, and if he goes for knockoff, I get a justified boost, which sadly doesn't help me a lot, because I'm a special variant, he gets an annoying crit, uh, it doesn't matter too much, because front is, let's see, he talks about shocker berry, sees that I'm shocker berry, with a physical investment, even with the crit, I'm guaranteed to live a max attack wild shot from this thing. So I just stay in right here, not going for weapon wave. I just need damage on the Thunderous. If you watch my team builder, you know my uh, whole game uh, winning plan is to sweep late game with my choice scarfed uh, Magiana. I can outspeed his whole team 
buying a choice scarf uh, duck trio, which he might be, but it's it's very unlikely seeing <laughs> seeing that this is most likely choice scarf Thunderous and duck trio is so fast. I don't know if it, if it should be choice scarf, but yeah, I just go straight here for a uh, flash cannon because that's the, f the strongest move I have for this thing. And after a flash cannon, he could be potentially in range of a plus one dazzling gleam. So if I get a kill with something else, I can kill him with a dazzling gleam. So I just go straight for the flash cannon right here. I'm guaranteed to lift this wild charge, but what I'm not guaranteed to lift is his Z move. If that is a Z wild charge, I will of course die and that means the crit didn't matter at all because even without the crit, a Z wild charge would kill me from this range. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know why he actually he pulled the Z move right here. It, if he expect me to be a bulkier Lucario or something like that, but the smart play on his part because now I'm guaranteed to die barring like, this is like, I don't know, a, a Z uh, flash or something like that. I don't know, a very weak electric move, something like that, a Z thunderstruck. But yeah, my Lucario is sadly dead, did not do too much, but I can go here straight into my fancy head, into my, um, into my new Lego. Because I'm still at full health, even if he's physical, a very poor physical defense, I can still take any hit from this and can go straight for a power gem. He doesn't have very nice nice switches to a power, not power gem, so I predicted to switch out right here, going for U-turn or hard switching, I can get at my rocks, because rocks are very important right now. Once, I did not got the damage on the Thunderous I wanted right here, so I need rocks up, so bring it in range of a plus one Dazzling Gleam, basically, because other than that, you could just go to Thunderous, take a hit, go for Wild Charge, and then I might be in Aqua Jet range from the Azumal. And speaking of Azumal, I need the rocks up, because without rocks, I won't be able to KO the Azumal with a plus one Dazzling Gleam as well. So basically, I need the rocks up, so I go straight for the rocks right here, late game rocks coming clutch in here, potentially. He indeed goes for the U-turn, so I can get a free rocks up. I expect him to go for into the Azumar right here because that can just kill me with Aqua Jet from this range. He knows by now that I'm Shed Shell, but he decides to go into his Fortress. Ooh, it's very annoying because that is of course his spinner and I would not like to get rid of the rocks. I need this rocks up if I want to late game sweep with my Azumar. So I just go straight for the Power Gem right here because he either kills me with Earthquake or uh, he goes for Rapid Spin and then can get up my rocks again. So yeah, he indeed goes for the Rapid Spin. I decide to just, I need my rocks, like I said, I need the rocks up, other than that it's gonna be very difficult to sweep, I would basically, need, I need a crit on the uh, Azumal and hope he doesn't go for Aqua Jet and not go Wild Charge on Thunderous, so basically it's impossible. If I don't have rocks up, it's gonna be very difficult to not to sweep with my uh, Magiana late game, so I go uh, once again for my rocks, spamming rocks basically, seeing if I can win this battle. He goes for the Earthquake, killing me, but now I have a problem, because I cannot kill Fortress on this range. Like I said in the beginning, I don't have HP Fire on my Ladias, I decide to have Ice Beam for a potential glide. So that comes down to hunt me right here. Basically, I have to go into Ladias and hope that he like hard switches his latent HP fire. Something like I have to go to my I can't go to my Yana yet and lock myself into anything because that would give away my choice scarf. And I still want to give him the impression that I'm not choice scarf and I'm shifty or something like that. Like basically, I'm, I'm preserving my Magiana the whole time. So he very well will think that Magiana is my win con at this point. That I'm preserving it to late game sweep. But I don't want to go into Magiana yet, giving away my choice scarf. So I decide to go into my Ladias right here. I I, like, there's no other play for me. I have to hope that I, I go for Thunderbolt, of course, that's the most damaging move I have. I basically have to hope that he hard switches, uh, fearing the HP fire, or that I get like a para, full para with my Thunderbolt, so he can't get rid of, rid of the rocks. So I go for the Thunderbolt right here. Uh, he does sadly stay in. I mean, I hope he goes for Explosion, Volt Switch, something like that, but he does go for Rapid Spin. So my rocks are gone. So my chances of winning are getting very, very low just because I didn't have HP fire on my Ladias, which came back to haunt me sadly. So yeah, I, I just fire off another Thunderbolt right here because like I said, I still want to give the um, uh, impression away that I'm choice. Uh, he probably just goes for Gyro Ball or something like that here, but decides to go for the Wolf Switch, basically granting him a free switch into anything. And he decides right here to go into his uh, Thunderous. Basic, basic aiming to kill me with knockoff. I ca could switch in my Magiana, but I can't. Like I said, I don't. I, I can't allow him to get, get him getting rid of my uh, choice scarf. So it was a 50-50. If he would go for knockoff or U-turn, so I had to. Uh, not. I could allow him to switch my Magiana right here, and because if he did go for knockoff, it would have gone for, uh, for knockoff on my Magiana. I would have gotten rid of my choice scarf. Would have been GG. But now I can go into Rhystickle. And yeah, basically I have to lock myself into Dazzling Gleam. I have a I have a decent chance of winning right here. If he goes for Wild Charge and I get a crit on Zoom and he doesn't go for Aqua Jet, then I can still uh, win the game. But basically I just go for the Dazzling Gleam right here and yeah, maybe I get a crit, maybe something. Like I didn't got Rockstar, which is very annoying, so I have to go for Dazzling Gleam. Does a lot of, 
but he goes for the Taunt, which is very nice. He fought a Shift Gear variant, so I got a free Dazzling Gleam up. I still outspeed him. I can KO him with Dazzling Gleam. Okay, Magiana, it's, let's go. It's one versus the world. Magiana versus the world. Can we pull this through? Can we pull this through? One is down. We get our first Soul Heart rules. What is his next switch in? What is his next switch in? He can bring this to me. Come on, show me, show me, show me the things. What does he switch in? He goes into his Soccer, which is his Azumul. I didn't got rocks up. I need a very high roll or a crit to kill him, depending on his investment. I can't tell that yet, because if I don't kill him, he can just go for a knockoff, get rid of my Scarf. He knows I'm Scarf by now. We already know he has knockoff. If he goes for knockoff with me, I'm not Scarf anymore, and he can just kill me with Dark Trio, because that thing outspeeds me. So I just go for the Dazzling Gleam right here, trying to get a crit or a very high roll. Depending on his investment, I might need a crit. I go, oh, Dazzling Gleam. Okay, that does very little. I needed a crit, but he goes for Waterfall. What? Jim, what are you doing? Are you choking the game away? I actually getting this win, a 1-0 win with a late game Magiana Sweep. Let's go, come on. Rysicle, he goes for Aquajet, gets a little damage. That doesn't matter anymore. I'm faster than everything on his team. I go for Dazzling Gleam. I kill the... Uh, the uh, Azumarill, I get another Solar Boost, he only has Foragers left with a very low uh, amount of health and the Daktrio at half, so even if he's Sash, that Sash is broken. I am at plus two, I'm at plus two Magiana with a Choice Scarf, I was beating his whole team. He goes into his Daktrio, can we kill him? Come on, show the money, show me the money, can I kill him? I go for the Dazzling Gleam, but he outspeeds and goes to Earthquake. And yeah, I got very excited once I saw that he did not go for knockoff right here, but... Uh, he outspeeds me and kills me, and that is a 2 all loss versus the Philadelphia so sadly. And the worst part about this, we lose to uh, Goat. Like you probably think, probably you think, okay, yeah, uh, you had the assumption he was indeed Choice Scarfed uh, Duck Trio. That is wrong. He was not Choice Scarfed Duck Trio. But last, why did he outspeed you then? He could not speed you. He said he outspeed the whole team. If you remember my team builder, I met, I mentioned that I outspeed uh, everything that wants to speed creep my uh, fastest mod, which is my Tornadus. Turns out, uh, Chimp. Didn't uh, maximize his CVs on Ducktree. He just ran max speed, max attack on this because it's a Sash variant. And uh, we talked about that. So yeah, because I was not. I uh, first of all, I could outspeed him if I'm a uh, jolly or timid. Better said, uh, max speed Magiana with Triscuff outspeed uh, max speed Ducktree. But I couldn't say a mean way. I could say it a nice way. The mean way would be I uh, expected too much from Chim's team building. I overestimated his uh, team building that he would maximize his EVs. Or if I'm nice, I could say I thought something is standard in league format, which is not standard. Like I just assumed it's standard to speed creep the fastest mon of your opponent so you can put the other EVs in something like that. And I know, I know analysts will say and people will say, Lars, why did you expect Ducktrio not to be max speed? It's a Ducktrio. Even like that is little EVs left over, you put them into bulk, it's still a duck trio, it's still gonna die from everything. It's a, it's a focus stage, it takes one hit and then it dies. And for them, I I can say, I made some cards. Like, I, I was prepared for this situation right here, like after the match happened, I made some cards. If he would, he had 64 EVs left over, if he just speed creeps my tornadoes. So these 64 EVs, he could guarantee many things. After rocks damage, he is guaranteed to live a plus two vacuum wave from my Lucario. He's guaranteed to live a flash cannon or a uh, or a Loros here from Lionel Lucario. If he does not have these EVs, he dies to them. He could potentially switch in. Uh, he could take a plus to Wagner Wave, kill me back. Same goes for um, um, my Leo Lego. Like you saw, Slash Mob is a 2 hit KO. That's, I have a 75% uh, uh, chance to kill look, 2 hit KO Duck Trio with no investment. If he had those 64, just the HP, not even in Spadef or something like that, that drops down to a 25% chance. So even if I get rocks damage on him, which is which is of course resistant, which are 6%, I had a very unlikely chance to kill on Sludge Bomb potentially, so I could switch in and then kill me with an Earthquake. Uh, other thing, um, what was the other card I made, what are the other ones I have? Um, uh, Ladias, Ladias Dragon Pulse, same thing. Uh, with, if, if, without the investment after rocks, I have a very high chance to kill him with the Dragon Pulse. I think it's around 80%, something like that. And if he has 64 investment in HP, that drops down to under 50% to KO from full. So, don't come at me and tell the EVs on Duck wouldn't matter. I just thought, uh, yeah, like I said, it could be nice, it could be mean, but either way, it was a mistake on my part in the end. I lost because I decided I wanted, I did not want max speed on my Magiana, I wanted to speed creep, I wanted to maximize my EVs, hoping that Shin would maximize as well. He didn't, and that basically won him the game. He was clear, was close to choking the game away at the end with the not going for knockoff and Azumarill, but yeah, like he, uh, in his, I think after talking, he thought, I'm a modest uh, Magiana, so he would outspeed with Duck Drew either way, but he needed just damage on me, so Earthquake would kill because he was Sash, because Sash Earthquake doesn't kill from full uh, in Magiana. So that was his reason. His reason was very much fine. I don't just don't agree with his reason in team building, but it won him the game in the end. I don't want to bash 
champ too much. He he does his team building. I could have scouted for that because in his other weeks he did the same. He had like max speed uh, duck trio, max attack. So it was my fault for basically not scouting enough how champ team builds. I would have could have known that he likes to run max just max speed duck trio, and I could have uh, evaded my Magiana. Um, good for that. So I could have won that, but an arrow team building sadly avoided that 1-0 win for me. But yeah, still GG to Chim. Very exciting game until the end. I was uh, after he did knock off a knockoff, I got very ecstatic in the match and hoping I could win this. But but sadly, yeah, I made a little error on team building. That's a mistake on my part. But yeah, the games are getting closer and closer. Next week we are actually facing the Pittsburgh Paratas and uh, Tap, who is currently 0-3. Of course, not going to spoil this week's match for him. So, yeah, he's not go looking too hot. Maybe he can capitalize on that and, uh, yeah, give me another loss and finally get another win, putting us in two and three. Nothing is lost that we are only at week four. It's only a third of the season which we are going through. Sadly, we are one and three, so it's getting kind of desperate. If we lose versus Tup, it's getting very dire for us because then we are tied with Tup for last place. And we actually, we need second place in the division to uh, get into playoffs. So we need to fight with probably George because Mono is currently unstoppable. He's, <laughs> he's currently uh, killing it with uh, being uh, undefeated. But yeah, that's all for this match. If you like, definitely leave a like, comment, subscribe. Definitely hit up Chip. Chip's channel links to his in the his description so you can see his side of the match. I think he did a live recording so you can be excited for that. And of course, uh, check out Jim and um, Bert. His links, are, uh, their links, not only his, their links are in the description as well. Check those out. But yeah, I will see you another time next week with the Pittsburgh Paratas. See you there for the W. Finally for the Bruce Adolf fan. May, may, maybe I can not make a mistake in T-Building there. <laughs> but yeah, I will see you there. Ciao.